Good afternoon, YouTube. Welcome to Fairytrace Tale Productions. So today, we're going to look at installing these P-Tech radiator guards on the Riehu uh, MR Pro. So this is the 22 model. I believe that these fit, of course, the 21 and 22, and these also fit the older uh, 18 and 19 gas gas EC models as well. As you know, I'm a huge fan of P-Tech stuff. They make really great quality products. We have the skid plate on there already, and the skid plate's been fantastic at protecting both the pipe and the underside of my Riehu. Uh, I've already hit it a number of times, haven't had any problems with bending. Uh, the radiator guards look even beefier in some ways, so I'm pretty excited. So we'll go ahead and weigh these as well, because I know a lot of people out there are worried about the extra weight of putting some things on your bike. Um, I think these are well worth the protection and not busting your radiators. For years now, I pretty much haven't worried about it. Most of my rads get pretty banged up, and you know, until they're either if the bike's overheating or leaking, I usually uh, run them until I take them to a rad chat shop and uh, have them fixed. So instead of doing that, and especially with renters and, and having issues with them breaking radiators while they're out, I wanted to have some really good protection on there. These are a great deal. They make them for pretty much all dirt bike models. So pretty happy with that. Uh, if you haven't checked P-Tech out, uh, please do. Here soon, a and Moto Toys, my rental company, is going to be selling P-Tech products on our website, so that's coming soon for us. All right, first, so I'll show you what comes with these uh, from the factory. I'd already opened them just to check out the uh, instructions and kind of get an idea of what I was going to be doing. But uh, otherwise, I, I put everything back in here. I'll say P-Tech, the, the cellophane that they used to wrap stuff was pretty intense. So they come wrapped together and then individually. We'll go ahead and get these off here. Look at those directions in just a second, but well, here's the first uh, fan side radiator. So it'll be go ahead and be my my right hand side on the Riehu. Little P P Tech emblem there. Um, gosh, the quality on this is really well done. Um, no hard edges. Everything looks very well cut. Uh, yeah, very. Very impressed. The bends look very good too. And here's the other side's radiator. Looks like plenty of uh, plenty of space to to mount and move air still. So and these are pretty thick, although they don't feel super heavy. So and these are labeled for left and right. All right, guys. So here's the directions. So this is just kind of like what everything is, what screws comes with it, so on and so forth. Back side, they actually give some pictures of uh, how to mount these on here. Pretty cool. I'm. Kind of a fan of this, although they have them taking apart the radiator hoses, which means draining stuff and making a mess. And I'm going to try to avoid doing that today. So uh, we'll see what I come up with as far as installation. I'm actually, instead of just taking off the shrouds, I'm going to go ahead and take off the gas tank as well, because I think I can move around the hoses a lot better while the radiator is still hooked up to everything might go terribly it might not work at all but we're going to try it also these still retain the use of the original plastic guards you just got to cut a little section off of them so pretty cool stuff uh, i'm i think this is going to go on relatively easy now we'll go ahead and weigh the guards with themselves and um with the hardware all right so zero it out on my scale first one is a about a pound 1.3 pounds so we're looking at 2.7 pounds and 2.85 pounds with the hardware so that is not a lot of uh, that is not a lot of weight you know uh, if you're worried about that being too much weight on your bike it's uh pretty much worth noting that you could probably stand to lose about three pounds rather than not have this on your bike you know what i'm saying and so what i was talking about was is these shrouds on the side here are going to come off i'm probably going to of course the seat's going to come off the shrouds and then the uh the gas tank here i'm going to probably remove it as well and then we're going to get to the radiators take them loose and see if we can get them on there without having to drain or make any mess with the coolant that's what i'm really hoping to be able to do but as you can see on this side i have the fan on this model i think that's kind of a requirement these days on uh these bikes but not all of them come with it but there's the fan of course the thermostat housing and all this stuff right here so if i can't move this enough out the way i'll have to take it loose and uh, get the skid plate on there but uh, i'm hoping to not have to do that we'll see here's the other side all right and uh, i'm just going to kind of video through this uh, i think most people know how to take a seat and a gas tank off so I may not show every ounce of detail, but we're going to give a good idea of reviewing these and how they went on and, and struggles I had. 
Okay guys, I'm just gonna stop right here and show you kind of what I'm doing. I didn't film through taking everything off. I think it's redundant. Most people know how to take a gas tank off. Most people know how to, to take a lot of plastics and stuff off. I'm just gonna roughly go through what I did to start. So I went ahead and took off the bolts on each side. There is a bolt that holds a shroud to the radiators on either side. Cool, cool beans. Uh, then there's a center bolt right here. Uh, basically, you take those three bolts off, the gas tank comes off. I obviously had removed the seat and the airbox cover before that, and that's pretty much where I'm at. I have to say, the gas tank comes off this bike super easy. I know a lot of two-strokes are that way, but EFI bikes, there's hoses, there's electrical plugs, there's little fittings you break. It's something to be said of taking off a gas tank on this bike is real nice and easy. Okay, for our next part here, this is what I'm hoping is, is when I take these loose, there's gonna be enough ply behind these hoses for me to get the uh, radiator guards on without having to undo these hoses and dump coolant all over the place. Uh, the way that the directions read, you'd be taking stuff apart and uh, you know, if you take the top hoses off, you know, you shouldn't be dumping coolant, but from the factory, they filled this thing all the way up. So I'd take it loose. Some coolant's going to, I just don't want to make a mess and I'm, I'm, you know, trying a different way. I like to do this kind of stuff. So if you want to follow the directions, I'm not saying that it's the wrong thing to do. I'm just saying that we're trying it a different way. So the idea here is, is that we're going to be taking the bolts on the inside of the, the radiators on the frame. And then we basically will be replacing that with the hardware that comes with the P-Tech plate. All right, guys, so ran into some issues here with this uh, stock MR Pro fan mount. Now, I'm not sure if Gas Gas did this differently or, or you know, how this has changed or whatever, but uh, I'm pretty sure that these uh, mounting brackets for the aluminum hardware here are riveted into the radiator. Um, couldn't be very far, but just enough to, to hold them in there, I guess. I couldn't, uh, I've tried prying them out a little bit, and there's definitely no screw hole. It looks very much like a rivet to me. So uh, I'm going to try to grind this side off and see if they come out okay. And um, yeah, I'll probably have to, to do that on the same side. I think I've got enough space because there's enough play back here to get in there. So um, we should be able to get the bracket off without taking anything loose. But that's kind of a surprise. I figured it would uh, the bracket would just be screwed on there. Okay, guys, after lots of cursing, metal shards, and being kind of pissed at the people who decided to um, rivet that this uh, bracket onto the radiator. Um, what the hell? I guess they assumed that uh, you'd never have to take it off there. See if I can get this thing to focus. There we go. But you kind of see uh, what I had to do. I took my Dremel with a uh, metal shearing type bit, metal cutting bit, and then uh, just took the heads off. So I was real gentle. I've always been pretty good with the Dremel. So... Um, and then you can see <laughs> what's left over. This should be flat enough. I'm not going to sand these down anymore, uh, just because I don't want to hurt the radiator in any way. Doesn't look like I slipped or missed anywhere. So radiator is good. I was able to, to push this far enough out to get in there and, and get the inside ones as well. So we should be good to get the other pieces on it and see how that goes. I did drop a, a screw down in there. <laughs> Um, I mean, of course, P-Tech's got new hardware, but uh, there's a screw missing in my skid plate I'll search around with with a magnet, but yeah, so the fan that does come with the Riehu is a spall type fan, which does work with the mounting hardware that comes with the uh, the uh, P-Tech radiator guards. I just uh, wasn't expecting these to be um, riveted in here. I mean, there <laughs> you can look in the center. There's no screw hole. Or nothing because I was really tripping myself there's no threads on the outside of this so I uh, don't know but it is what it is at this point wasn't too bad just pretty annoying all right guys so this is where I'm at um, I'm uh, <laughs> I got the fan off and I gotta push the hose towards the inside of the bike where it's it's pretty flexible and nothing seems like it's gonna break or strain I pulled the radiator out a little bit and everything's still connected. This is not the directions, by the way. Um, and I'm just kind of wiggling it up. And so far, so good. It's uh, been kind of slow and arduous, but there we go. If you're deliberate and kind of gentle with it, it'll slide up in there. Oh. The inside, uh, 
might be a little bit more of a challenge. Oh, there we go. At the top. I actually think those rivets on the inside are kind of in my way, but looks like we made it up though. All right, need to fix the grommets a little bit, but I think we got a little room for that. All right, that's on both posts that are in the frame. Recap this real quick. Had to grind off the uh, original rivets that were in that frame. Plenty of space inside and outside with the Dremel tool to grind that off there. Little risk of damaging the radiator unless you're really bad with the Dremel. So grind it off, comes off, pops off. If you have a racing model without the fan, this is not a problem. <laughs> in fact, ordering a fan and then getting these P-Tech might just be less of an ass pain. But um, we got it on there though, without removing any of the hosing and without bending anything too bad. And now we got our fan that's gonna go on right now. Okay, so we've ran into a bit of a problem so far. Uh, I can't find any extra hardware in our large box that came or anything else. Just, a, you know, I thought maybe I I dropped an extra bag of screws, but that wouldn't make sense because there's a, already a bag over there. Anyways, the screw fans are not included in the kit. Like there's no, these look like M4s maybe, maybe smaller even. Um, but yeah, so, <laughs> uh, I have no way to, to screw the fan on there because the screws that come with the kit or come with the bike on its own, like custom made bracket, uh, they're like, they're like, they're like freaking industrial, you know, self-tapping screws like plastic or wood screws, you know? So, um, yeah, it, obviously they don't fit. So that's. So that's a problem, so I'm going to have to run to the hardware store, which sucks in the morning because I'm supposed to be riding this tomorrow. Of course, I should never really wait to the last minute to do stuff, but I wouldn't be me if I didn't. Uh, everything else has gone on well. I got the two screws there. Um, I mean, <laughs> they, cut, they included that hardware to mount, and then the front plate goes on there. That's super easy, so... We'll mount that front plate on and uh, move on to the other side. Okay, there you have it, guys. So I have the front plate on here. Haven't quite got the plastic cut, but uh, it is very sturdy. If you look at how thick that metal is, everything wrapped around with the uh, the rivets that I had to shave down pretty well. This is very form fitting, though. It's it's very tight to the rad, so um, not a lot of uh, tolerance there. This front plate, very simple. All it does is just bolt on. I mean, there's nothing crazy. You just It's a little bit of a pain with my uh, ratchet to get it in there to tighten the bolts down. But I Loctited everything. Made sure the main grommet bolts were nice and tight because you can't get to them after you put this front plate on. And there you go. As I said before, we're going to have to get some bolts that work with this. Kind of a bummer, but we'll make that work. Overall, very happy with it. Didn't have to take anything apart. Now we're gonna go try to do the other side. All right, guys, so we just got this side on. I didn't record it because honestly, this side was really easy to slide on. So once again, I just went up from the bottom where the hose is, and this one is very flexible. Just moved it out of the way, slid the radiator up on there, and then uh, bolted it down on the inside. Very easy. And then the front's gonna go on just like the other side. So uh, what, six more bolts, and then you gotta cut the, the plastic shrouds a little bit. I think that's the other thing that I did in between shoots here uh, was I did get the plastic shroud on this side. So you got to cut kind of the inside. The directions show you exactly where you need to cut on these. So not very hard. Uh, I always do the old trick where I use a small butane torch, heat up a razor blade, cut the plastic. Makes it a lot easier. So long as your butane torch doesn't explode. All right, guys. So there you go. That is what it looks like. I do not have the tank all the way screwed down because, like I said, I got to go grab some hardware and it's late at night uh, for that fan. But uh, yeah, I mean, they just screw on pretty much as advertised. Not hard at all. Uh, the left side definitely seems sturdier. I, I cranked down the screws on this side. It just is not quite as sturdy. But man, I tell you what, it's a lot sturdier than what it was stock. So. Not a whole lot we can really complain about. Um, the plastic guards where they recommend to cut them is perfect. 
So they go over and they give you a nice stock look. You can't even tell they're on there, which is pretty cool. So um, the holes for this line up pretty well. They give you hardware for over here too. So um, no worries there, but you can see the P-TECH emblem from this side. And then of course I'll have my radiator fan mounted tomorrow. So I got everything pretty much ready to go. And then right here, Yep, and see the, the holes line up, so that's pretty much how that goes. But very happy. Last parts, of course, would be just throwing the, the seat and the airbox cover back on. So not too bad of a job. Just all I can say is uh, stay patient. <laughs> a little bit of patience goes a long way because you kind of got to fiddle around. If you're not going to take your radiator hoses apart, then you really got to kind of slide those, those rad guards up. If you're patient, you can do it without hurting nothing. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Well guys, stay tuned on my channel. If you haven't liked or subscribed, please do that. Helps me out a ton. I'm gonna be doing the LED light mod in the front. The guy that views my uh, content uh, sent me over a LED uh, kit that he didn't use. So very excited to be putting that on here. Uh, and then also things coming up. I have a P-TECH skid plate uh, right there for the beta. So that was another really sweet buy. I've always had the stock skid plate on it and I've busted side cases a few times. So for renters, don't want that to happen. Uh, I've also, I'll probably shoot a quick video of all the maintenance I'm doing, but I'm putting some new grips on that, new throttle tube, the skid plate. Um, got new tires for the beta as well. These are the 220 ride tires. So yeah, keep, keep an eye out for those. I'm gonna do a little bit of a review on these, but these are cool. New company that does tires, really great deal. I'm excited to try them out. But yeah, oh yeah, one more other thing, guys. I finally got my plate for the Riehu. So I got this plated and titled and everything in Colorado. Um, it is not plated under the name Riehu. So for those of you that wanna go through this process in Colorado, you have to title and plate this vehicle as generic cycle. So it'll be C period, Y period, L period, E period. So really weird. It was a huge pain in the butt, but basically Riehu is not registered in the United States uh, with some federal agency or whatever. So they just have to register it generically. I didn't have to get it inspected or anything else. So pretty much good to go. And in Colorado, if you're not familiar, don't need to have turn signals. You just need a headlight, brake light, and a horn technically and one mirror. So I'll be putting a mirror up there on one of my hand guards. But thanks for watching guys. I really appreciate you sticking with me. Let me know if you like this format better or if you like seeing everything in, in like a sped up motion. This was kind of a new thing that I was testing. It slows me down a lot less when I don't have to check on the camera and mess with the angles all the time. So um, this is kind of, those that have some sort of mechanical ability should be able to get an idea of what it takes to put these on. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time. Ferret Face out.